In this episode, I'll give you some tips for using your pop-up flash. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV, brought to you as always by Adorama. It's the camera store that has everything, in fact anything you see in this video you can buy it at Adorama.com, so check them out. Well today we're going to be talking about this little guy, it is the pop-up flash. Now a lot of cameras, in fact most cameras, have this little pop-up flash right here, and I've seen so many photographers, beginning, intermediate, and advanced photographers, try to do things with this little pop-up flash that it was never intended to be used for. So we're gonna talk about two of the most common mistakes used with the pop-up flash, and I wanna tell you about why it's, it's on our flash, really, or on our camera. It's on our camera for two specific reasons. It's there so in really dark environments, when we wanna shoot things that are close up, like 10 feet or closer, maybe 15 feet, things like wedding receptions, out with friends, uh, on vacation, stuff like that. When we shoot friends and family, it's just sort of a, a thing to illuminate our room or our subject. Now, if you wanna get creative and do some really nice portraits and things like that, you really need an off-camera flash, not the pop-up flash, but this will get you by in a pinch. And the other thing that this is used for is to uh, fill in light when we have a bright background or something like that. It's called a fill flash. Now, to help me explain all of this, I've asked Lex to join me. Hi. Thank you for being here, Lex. And we're gonna show you a few things. In fact, some of the things that we've shot for this video, we shot at night. Unfortunately, we can't shoot video and stills at night because our video camera doesn't have a light because we're traveling all over the world. In fact, right now we're in very hot and slimy, not slimy, but humid, sweaty, sweaty hot and sweaty, uh, how do you say the name Can, of this town? Can, Cairns, 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 Australia. I don't know, it's very hot here. And so we're gonna walk you through some of these things. Now before we get through, uh, go through all of that, I wanna remind you that Adorama has fantastic photo contests. And what makes them so fantastic? Well, first, they're free to enter and you can win some great prizes. So click the link and enter the contest today. Well, our pop-up flash, the main purpose is to act as a fill flash, and uh, that's usually used in bright sunlight. Now, I know a lot of people aren't thinking of using a flash in bright sunlight, but it can really help out. In fact, Lex and I shot previously a little demo right here where we're standing when the sun was a little bit brighter, and you can see the difference between a pop-up flash on, or fill flash turned on, and a fill flash turned out. Let's take a look at that right now. Well, here's an example of when a fill flash is totally appropriate. We're gonna have Lex, we're gonna have you look that way toward the sun. So we've got pretty good light, but we've got some shadows on the side of her face, but this will give us some options. So we're gonna take their first picture here. This is a nice close portrait. And oh, you look great. Looks pretty darn good, actually. But I'm gonna throw on the pop-up flash just so we can fill in some of those shadows. Keep the exact same pose, excellent. All right, now we can look at those side by side, and now we have some options with a little bit of shadow or with some of those shadows eliminated with our fill flash. And you can see that the pop-up flash gives us lots of options to choose from in post-production. Well, the other thing that I wanna talk about with the pop-up flash are two common mistakes. Now, the first mistake that a lot of people make is uh, when they have their camera on, they don't realize that this lens, when you're zooming in, if you have an SLR that has interchangeable lenses, when you have a long lens like this, this flash is going to hit the end of this lens, and you can see this is going to cast a shadow at the bottom of our picture. And so if you're using a lens like this, what you need to do is, well, you can't zoom all the way in. You need to zoom out a little bit. And even if you're zoomed out, the lens hood will also cast a shadow. And so in some instances, you need to take that off or you're gonna have this big shadow in the bottom of your picture. So just a note, this flash isn't tall enough to get over your lens. Now what's the solution to that? Well, you need an external speed light that goes on the top of your camera. That will get up above your lens, so beware of that. The second, and this is something I see all over, we've traveled all over the world now for over a year, and I've seen this in almost every city we've been in with photographers taking pictures of things like the bay or a city or at a sports stadium. They'll turn on their pop-up flash and try to illuminate the impossible. And what I mean by that is they're trying to illuminate something like a stadium. It's I mean, could you imagine having a little flashlight and trying to illuminate something that is you know, half a mile away or something like an entire city. It's just not going to happen. This is really made for things that are close up. In fact, Lex and I went out again last night and we shot some pictures and you can see here, 
I'll, I'm, I'm talking over this video as I'm shooting, and you can see the different distances and how Lex is illuminated. Let's take a look at that. Lex and I went to a large field in the center of town, and you can see that we were shooting at a 60th of a second at f3.9 at ISO 200. I kept my ISO low so you could really see the effects of the flash and how it dies out very quickly. You can see here that at about six feet, that's where Lex is standing from the camera, she's illuminated just fine. But notice how the light falls off really rapidly on the ground and doesn't light up the background at all. Now, when she steps back to about 13 feet, notice how much of the ground is now illuminated by the flash. And that's because the flash is now at max power. It's giving all it can give and Lex looks just fine, but again, the background is totally dark. Now, when Lex goes to about 16 feet, she's now underexposed. She's at the very edge of the flash. As she moves back, she just falls into darkness. Now, ideally, for a scene like this, we'd increase our ISO significantly, maybe even shoot at a lower shutter speed. So we went down the street and we shot at a pool. Now, notice I have increased my ISO to 800, and again, we're shooting at a 60th of a second at f3.9. This is not a flattering photo. What's happening here is the flash is trying to illuminate this entire scene, this entire pool. And so it's actually really hard light on Lex and she's a little overexposed and the background just doesn't look very good. What we should do is shoot at a slower shutter speed. So that's what I did next. I shot with a really slow shutter speed, one sixth of a second, again, F3.9, ISO 800. Notice the background is much more pleasing, but now Lex is underexposed. That's okay, I can just turn on my puppet flash, add a little fill, and now we have a much more balanced photo where we can see the background and Lex and everything looks nice and it's warmed up because of the color temperature of our flash. That is the best way to shoot a scene that is like this, a big open scene. Use a slower shutter speed, a higher ISO, and just use your pop-up flash to fill on your subject. We can go in here and take a look at these two pictures side by side, and you can see that the second photo is much more flattering than the first photo. Now, I have to be honest, on the second photo, I used a, a specific flash setting, and it was called slow sync on the Panasonic FZ1000. Sometimes it's called rear curtain sync on other flashes, but it allows you to shoot at a slower shutter speed, and the camera knows just to do a small burst of light to fill in your subject without overexposing whatever you're shooting, and you'll get a much more, uh, a much more pleasing image that way. Well, there you have it. Great uses for the pop-up flash. Remember, it's made to uh, act as a fill flash. It's made to shoot things that are close, but it's not gonna illuminate a city or a port or things like that. And if you have a lens hood on, make sure you take that off so you don't get big shadows. And if you have a longer lens, you're gonna have to have an external speed light or else you're going to have a big shadow in your photos. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Exploring Photography. Remember, there are a million episodes, not a million, but there are a ton of episodes of Exploring Photography, Digital Photography one-on-one, -on -one, uh, all kinds of great stuff from Joe McNally and Gavin Hovey and Tamara Lackey and just a bunch of people at Adorama TV. And so you can subscribe absolutely free. You can click the link and subscribe today. And you can also visit the Adorama Learning Center. We've got tons of written articles as well as supplementary material for a lot of the videos that we've made. So check that out. It's absolutely free. Thanks again for joining us and we will see you again next time. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.